A year of planning had netted only three points for Coach Dwight Thomas's Florida squad in the fourth quarter of last year's Florida Georgia game. But with a minute 20 to play and the score tied at three apiece, Matt Duerkamp, after missing a 45 yard field goal on the previous play, sends this 26 yarder through the uprights for a 6 3 Florida lead. But Georgia wasn't done. Final play of the ball game, quarterback Al Pinkins looking for the winning score, rolls right, but Miss Williams hammers the ball loose from Dwayne Mills, and Florida would hang on for the win and even the series. After the game, a very cool, calm, and collected Coach Thomas took a quiet moment to reflect on the accomplishment. One year later, there are still some Florida residents' hands who hasn't been shaken. Sunshine Network proudly presents Florida Georgia 8. We come to you live from the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida. 70 excellent college football players to be will take the field. It's Georgia and Florida, episode number eight. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Dave Reed. Great to have you with us. If you're a college football fan of the Southeast at all, you are going to love what we've got for you this evening. The two states' 70 best high school football players are on the field tonight. And next year, you're going to be seeing them play at places like Miami and Florida State and Georgia and Georgia Tech and well, lots of other places as well. How good is the talent on this field tonight? Well, for the past seven years, nearly 100 All-Americans have taken this field. There are 13 All-Americans on this field tonight. Everybody's an All-Stater. And for the last three years, at least one top-round NFL pick has played in this ball game. Indeed, it's very, very good. And the series, as you might imagine, has been very, very even as well. It's tied at 3-3-1. and one. Florida has won two out of the last three, including last year's 6-3 defensive struggle. Barry Milligan joins me. You and I have had the chance to do this thing for the last three years, and this might be the best collection of talent we've seen to date. Boy, that's really saying something, too. As you mentioned, Dave, 13 All-Americans, seven from Florida, six from Georgia. Primarily, the Georgia All-Americans are defensive-oriented, but in this game, they're somewhat limited. The teams have to play a basic 50-style defense, no blitzing or stunning, and we're expecting a lot of points to be put up tonight. We have the Gatorade National Player of the Year with us this evening. You've heard him if you know high school uh, recruiting and all. He's Dexter Daniels, and he's going to make Steve Spurrier a very, very happy guy in Gainesville next year. A great player at Valdosta High School out of a great program. He had 101 unassisted tackles this year, 176 total, and led Valdosta to a 37-1-1 and one record while he played there. The two best quarterbacks in the state of Georgia are also with us. You'll see them a little bit later on at Parks Hughes, but Rodney Hudson is a guy who's going to start this evening out of LaGrange. He champion the LaGrange High School team, national champions last year. National champs in a cannon arm was responsible for 36 touchdowns last year and about 2,200 yards of offense. Georgia has a couple of All-American defensive ends, but Florida's are every bit as good. Tuan Russell and Kenny Holmes are about as good a high school defensive end set as you will ever see. Exactly right. W Russell had 176 tackles last year. Or actually, Russell had 212, 176 for Holmes. And Dennis Erickson may be the happiest coach in the South because he'll have both those guys playing as Hurricanes next year. Tall, fast, Miami prototype players. And out of Bradenton Manatee comes Kami Frazier to start for the Florida team at quarterback. Veer quarterback, Florida let him get away. Well, everybody in the state of Florida get him, let him get away. That's been the big question. How did that happen? He'll be a gem for Nebraska. He had about 1,800 yards of offense, a good sprint out passer. It's going to be a dandy. The 70 best players the two states have to offer, and it's all coming your way. Georgia and Florida we will be back. do Dana because I can't see the scoreboard with that thing let's bring that down see that's a little better there you go. milk that works that good for you well, Florida's gonna kick off all right they probably deferred yeah no, Georgia's kicking off. 
PA guy was wrong. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Start yet, guys? Is that Gator back there? Tony Gator's the deep back, Dave. Bapus and Tameric. Bapus. presentation of Florida Georgia 8 is brought to you by your Southeast producers of milk. Milk, it does a body good. By your local Coca-Cola bottler, bottlers of Coca-Cola Classic. You can't beat the real thing. And by Texaco and Texaco System 3 Gasoline, official sponsor of the 1992 U.S. Olympic team. Georgia and Florida live from the Sister Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida. A steamy, balmy, yet dry evening as the two states' 70 best get set to go at it. And the two states' arguably best coaches. Dale Williams of Georgia, Sam Budnick of Florida. Dale Williams, 214 wins at Waycross. Sam Budnick, 208 wins at Cardinal Newman in West Palm Beach. Sam Budnick, the only coach that uh, Cardinal Newman has ever had. 11 conference championships, three district championships, two regional championships, and he is thrilled to death to be a part of this game, as is Coach Dale Williams, who played quarterback, defensive back, and offensive line at the University of Georgia, actually played in the 1959 Orange Bowl while playing in Georgia against Missouri. There are some rules this evening you should be noted up. High school rules, four 12-minute quarters. There's no overtime or tiebreaker. You have to play a base 50 defense. You can't blitz unless you're inside the 10-yard line. Then you can do anything you want to do, and you're going to back up 10 yards if you violate any of those rules. It's designed to promote offense, and that's what we expect tonight. Balmy evening in Orlando, 88 degrees, partly cloudy. Doesn't look like we're going to get any rain at all this evening. So settle back and relax. It should be a dandy football game. Florida has won the toss and has elected to receive, and Raymond Treherne will kick off for Georgia. Tony Gator is the deep back for Florida. Bafus McCoy and Tameric Vanover, names who you will recognize if you follow high school football recruiting. If you don't recognize them now, I assure you, you will in the next three to four years. Treherne with a kick. And Gator will settle in with it about his own four-yard line. Breaking right to the right side, and Daniels in pursuit, knocked out of bounds at the 31-yard line. It's a pretty good return by Gator, 26, 27 yards on the return. And Florida will take it over, first and 10. And here's Tommy Frazier, 6'1", 185-pounder out of Manatee. Look at those numbers. Rush for 890, pass for an equal number, 29 yards. And a lot of the schools around the state wonder what happened. He is a mobile quarterback. He is not your drop back quarterback. You will see Dan Cannell later. He is more of that drop back variety. Frazier will have Dwayne Mobley and Tony Gator in the backfield as they will set it up in the I formation. Florida will run the pro I and the split pro set. And here's Mobley up to the 34 yard line. Gave him a couple on the play. Carlos Curry over there in the stop for the Georgia squad, 6-2 out of Decatur Columbia High School. And here's your lineup, Mobley and Gator in the backfield. Chase Showers, the speedster, Tameric Vanover, normally a running back playing the flanker this evening. Johnny Church is your tight end. And your offensive line, it's a big one. They go 275, 270, 295, 265, and 265. Jason Odom and Greg Harper, excellent offensive tackles. Second down, call it a long seven for Florida. Frazier, the pitch to Gator on the wide side. Gator slips for no gain. May have even lost a couple of yards. Scott Freeney, the All-American defensive end, Barry Milligan, and we will talk about him quite a bit. Here's your defensive line. Freeney and Randall Godfrey, two All-American defensive ends. We talked about them in the pregame. Chris Turner, Jermaine Elam, and Carlos Curry round out the front line for the Georgia squad. And the linebackers, well, they don't get any better than this. Dexter Daniels and Ronnie Smith in the middle, Walter Harris, Trampus Rice, Fred Kilgore, and Mike Higgins, your secondary for the Georgia squad. 
Third down and seven for Florida. First time we've seen, seen the straight drop back too, and now Frazier's gonna tuck it in. Frazier down to the 37-yard line, way shy of the first down. Fred Kilgore coming up from a strong safety position to make the stop. Kilgore, the six-foot Loganville native, gonna be going to North Greenville JC. And in an all-star game like this, Barry Milligan, the defenses do have the edge and certainly will have the edge early. Well, a nice uh, job by the Georgia defense on the first series, Dave. We saw that offensive line, a little bit of a makeshift line, and this young man, though, may be the difference in this ball game if we have a defensive struggle like we did last year. Sean Liss, you saw his numbers there, also has 50-yard plus range from uh, his field goal kicking. He may be the answer to Bobby Bowden's kicking roars. This is Mike Higgins taking it for Georgia. Gets a block, gets another block. Turns it around the left side, gets another block. And down to the right yard line. Excellent return by Treherne. He got some great blocking from the guys up front. So, nine minutes, 43 seconds to go in the first quarter. No score early on. It will be Georgia's chance when we return. Stay with us. The dairy farmers of Florida and Georgia remind you that milk is America's milk First quarter, the Georgia sidelines, they stymied Florida for only seven yards in their first series. And now it's Georgia's turn, and they will take over right at their own 31-yard line. Our own Barry Milligan had a chance earlier to talk to Dale Williams, he of Waycross, Georgia, and asked him about offense in this ball game. Well, I think it'll be the quality of the defensive players that'll make the difference and not the limitations that they put on the defense. As the pass has proven, uh, sometimes it can be one with one or two touchdowns, but sometimes it takes several touchdowns. So it's kind of tough to answer that question, but I think the quality of the players over there will make the difference. Quality of the players indeed, and there's one right there, number 34 in Robert Toomer. He was stymied that time, and Robert Toomer going to LSU next year, the most prolific runner in Georgia history. And this is Rodney Hudson. Very mobile quarterback, 6'2", out of LaGrange. He'll be playing for Jackie Sherrill at Mississippi State next year. The Georgia back of the year, Rodney Hudson. Take it up the middle, and Hudson wants to sprint and throw, and it's overthrown and nearly picked off by Earl Little back in the Florida secondary. Little, the 6'2 North Miami native, will be playing for Michigan next year. Wants to be a school teacher after he graduates from, Mich from Michigan. 
Georgia's squad's going to run that split back, split back veer. Easy for me to say. Here's Hudson, your quarterback. Robert Toomer and Jerome Shepard will start at fullback and tailback. McCraney and Wilson are your wide receivers, and Adam Meadows, a very good one, will be at the tight end slot. Third down for Georgia, call it eight. Split back set, and Hudson gives off the tumor up the middle, and he is stymied yet another time. And Florida defensive line led by the nose guard, Connell Spain, making the stop. Spain, the USA Today, honorable mention All-American, and Larry Wright from University Christian in Jacksonville also in. And as we anticipated, Bear, defensives dominating early. Well, this is like a couple of heavyweights, you know, Dave going at it early on. Nothing outrageous uh, from either side. Straight dives up the middle. Neither coach trying to do too much or show too much here early on. You've got to bear in mind, these players have been here only a week, as you see Tony Gator going back Henry to receive the kick from Chris McCrady. They've been the here Georgia a week, and they really haven't had much contact with any. Most of them have Number just nine, been walking Tony Gator. here in the middle of the summertime. You don't want to strain these kids too much. McCrady gets a short but very high kickoff, and he gets a disastrous. Let's see. Well, well, say obviously not. It'll go out of bounds, and Florida will have it just shy of their own 40-yard line. So a break for the Florida squad. These players got here um, really last Saturday. They've been in Orlando, really taking in the sights for the last week or so, hitting all the attractions around the area. And this is really the first contact they've had. Interestingly enough, Bear, all these guys were studs in high school. It's a very different situation here. Well, and the coaches will be are proud of the fact that the players have had no ego problems. There's been a very a sense of team, uh, real good camaraderie, as a matter of fact, from the Florida and Georgia side. Frazier inside handoff. Not much going as Scott Freeman is there to wrap up Dwayne Mobley, the six-footer out of Fernando County, who will be playing for the Gators next year down in Gainesville. And here's a staff for the Florida Ball Club. We mentioned Sam Budnick, David Wilson out of Tallahassee Lincoln, Jim McCool out of Palaka, and Robbie Pruitt from Jacksonville's University Christian, Bill Shields, Sam Miller out of Miami Killian, Al Milton at Coconut Creek, and Taylor McGrew out of Mayo Lafayette. The mentors for Florida. You can be an assistant coach in this game as you look at Sam Budnick and then coach later as a head coach. But once you are a head coach in this game, that's the only shot you'll get at it. Second down and a long eight for Florida. Frazier rolling left, has a man open, but not for long, and nearly intercepted down at the 31-yard line. That's Walter Harris, member of LaGrange's national high school team, and Tommy Frazier a little frustrated. Harris, the LaGrange native, going to Mississippi State along with Rodney Hudson. Well, he had a couple of receivers out there, and we've seen each of our quarterbacks throw one right in the hands of an opposing defensive back here early. Harris certainly should have had that. And now it'll be... Once again, third and very long, but the battle of the field position, though, Dave, here early uh, being won by Florida. Sean Liss uh, should be able to bury Georgia if the Florida squad not able to convert. Frazier sets him up. The honorable mention USA Today All-American. Drops, quarterback draw, finds a hole, and it closes quickly. It does get across the 45 to the 47-yard line before Carlos Curry and Dexter Daniels are there combining to wrap him up. You're going to hear Dexter Daniels' name called quite a bit this evening, the preseason National Defensive Player of the Year. Another one of those Valdosta studs, Bear. Yeah, he's a great one. And Carlos Curry, 6'2", 250 pounds. He's a big kid, but very quick feet and knows how to get to the ball. Here's Sean Liss, who pointed for a 46-yard average. We watched the practice yesterday. Look at that kick. He was shanking him 45 yards in practice yesterday. That one goes a yard deep in the end zone. Oh, well, they're going to love to see him in Tallahassee. Well, and that's a mistake. He's kicking from his own 40-yard line, and he needs to be going for the sidelines. All right, six minutes, 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Stay tuned. We'll be back right after this from your Southeast producers of milk. Milk it does a body good. Still available. To learn about membership and tickets to the Big Ten SEC or the Super Bowl.
Florida Georgia won. It was all Sammy Smith early. He would set a new Florida Georgia record because it was the first game, but not a bad effort. 185 rushes and a touchdown. He destroyed Georgia that night. Your final score. Florida 23, Georgia 7. Sammy Smith would have a career at Florida State, of course, and now the Miami Dolphins and the Denver Broncos. We'll give you a look at several of those this evening. Flashbacks from previous games, and there are a bunch of them. Zip zip so far early in the ball game. Sean List for Florida has punted twice for a 52 yard average. Well, the bad news though, Dave, the net would be much lower than that because they kick going into the end zone and the ball comes out to the 30 yard line. Oh. They might give the offense every chance they get in this ball game. They want to see some big plays and some scores put on the board. Give us off to the tailback, and that's Jerome Shepard out of Bowden, Georgia. He'll be going to Georgia military next year. Here's your offensive line for Georgia. Collins Peden, the stud there. Pat Rhodes, Mark Graves, Dusty Ziegler, and Boris Oden. Very mobile right tackle, Boris Oden. All of these guys on both offensive lines are large, but they also have the ability to move and pull. And you're going to see a lot of slanting and a lot of trapping for that reason this evening. A real credit, too, to all the players on the offensive side. None of these guys played the beer offense in high school, but they picked it up well here. First complete pass of the ball game. Hudson finds Juan Daniels out of the flat. Daniels the deep threat out of Norcross, Georgia. Great speed. Twan Russell and Steve Keen combine on the stop for Florida. Just a little quick out. One thing they like to do is isolate the receivers, try to get them one-on-one. -on -one. Juan Daniels has great hands, and you see there, he shook off Steve King for the Florida team, trying to make the, the play out there wide, but able to pick up the first down and up to the 45-yard line. One of 13 USA Today All-Americans on the field, Juan Daniels gets the first first down of the ball game. Now they get it up to gut the Tumor. Tumor across the 50 and into Georgia, or into Florida territory, we should say. About two yards shy of the first down. Earl Little coming up to make the stop one more time. Here's your defensive line for Florida. We mentioned Twan Russell and Kenny Holmes, but John Browning and Connell Spain will anchor the oh, interior that night. Larry Wright, great sound fundamentals out of Jacksonville. He'll be going to South Carolina next year. Second down and call it seven. Second Ball at the 48-yard line of Florida. Larry Wright played for Robbie Pruitt, who is an assistant coach in this game. As you mentioned, a great technique. Excellent fundamentals, quick feet, really good skills, although he played for a single-A high school. Second down, the interior handoff goes to Jerome Shepard once again, and Shepard stopped after about a yard gain. Larry Wright's in there. Travis Sherman is also in there for Florida. Sherman going to Florida State next year. Todd Rebol and Travis Sherman, your two interior linebackers, your base 50 defense once again. Tyrone Williams trying to recover from a knee injury he sustained in practice yesterday. Brian McGee, Steve King, and Earl Little, who we have called several times this evening already, your secondary for Florida. Third down and one. Earl, the cousin of David and Larry Little. So there's some football blood in that family. Here's Toomer, off right tackle, big hole to that side. Sherman brings him down at the 40-yard line, but not before he gets the first down. Robert Toomer, we told you, the most prolific runner in Georgia history. In his career, he rushed for 7,868 yards. Well, and here's part of the beauty of the veer. You isolate guys on those linebackers. You saw number 67, Todd Rebel, being taken right out of the play, and that leaves a one-on-one -on -one matchup there with number 30, Travis Sherman, and Robert Toomer, and Toomer got the better of him there and picked up the first down. Can you imagine rushing for 7,800 yards in a high school career? Wow. Interior handoff once again inside the 40-yard line they go. That's Shepard. And Dave, those yards, 78-68 for Toomer, that came on 1,222 carries, and that is a national record. His running mate, Unre Solomon, who we will see later, ran for about 3,500 himself. In that backfield, you've got 11,000 yards rushing in three years of high school football. Why do you want to throw? <laughs> Second down and nine for Georgia. Big slot to the top of the screen. Hudson looking for the one-on-one -on -one move in the flat. And complete down at the five-yard line. Back on the play, it's going to be pass interference on Florida. But Shedrick Wilson eluded two Florida defenders, made the grab. Brian McGee and Earl Little couldn't catch it. Well, the All-Stater out of Thomasville High School set school records for receptions with 66 for yards receiving with 980, 
Dale Williams said, this guy is our deep threat. As you see, the referee confirms what you said, Dave. Joe Ryder calling pass interference. That will be declined. A little timing pattern here, straight drop back. Good protection from the offensive line, and what a beautiful pass by Rodney Hudson. He laid it up there exactly where it should be. Let him about a yard and a half, let Shedrick Wilson run underneath it. It's first and goal, Georgia. We thought we'd see some offense in this ball game. We haven't disappointed yet. Hudson will set him up in a pro set. Split back beer, gives a shot. Oh, yeah. Fumble underneath, and Florida's got it. Oh, little. No, check it. Not a little, but Tyrone Williams, the other quarterback, falls on the football, and Florida gets a big break. Well, like, like his high school teammate Tommy Frazier, Tyrone Williams will also be headed to Nebraska. Let's see what happens. He never got a handle on it. They tried to hand it off to Robert Toomer. It looked as if the ball bounced off his left hip, Dave. He never got a handle on it. Williams right there with the recovery, and what a huge turnover. Boy, both coaches told us, you know, the game obviously could come down to mistakes. There is so much talent on both sides of the ball. There's just not a, a, an advantage in terms of talent. It may boil down to mistakes. Florida will run out of the eye and Frazier right up the gut to try and get a little bit of breathing room. They'll get it down to the seven yard line. Gain of a couple on the play. And that's your backup fullback, Marvin Davis, 6'2", 245 pounder out of South Dade. He is going to play for Dennis Erickson next year at Miami. And they're projecting that Marvin may be a defensive lineman at Miami at 6'2", 245. He kind of fits the mold of that size there. If they could put about 20 pounds on him in that Miami strength program, he could be another solid one for Dennis Erickson. Second down, a long seven. Fumble again. Scores, and let's see who's got it. It'll be Florida football. Oh, what a break. It's a little humid down on the field, and that grass is a little bit wet. This is going to be a little slippery down there this evening, and Florida dodges yet another bullet, hangs on to it. Well, you see the hustle of Marvin Davis there. Once again, they give it to the tailback, McCoy, who doesn't get a handle on it either. It looked as if McCoy was looking upfield and never had a good grip on the ball. They credit Marvin Davis with great hustle to recover that. Bapus McCoy out of Eustace will be going to Georgia Military next year. Sam Budnick pondering things on third down and nine. This is McCoy again. No, they take it up the middle. Frazier looking for somebody to throw it to. Lofts it out in the middle of nowhere, really, trying to get Shepard, who is coming in from the right side. Walter Harris over there on the coverage along with Don Bray and... Bray putting the pressure on Tommy Frazier. You better believe it, Dave. He had a man open about 20 yards down the middle, but that's why he couldn't get it to him. Look at the pressure there. The All-American Randall Godfrey out of Lowndes County. Scott Freeney, the other end from Athens Clark Central. They flushed him out of the pocket, and all Frazier could do was throw it away. Sean Liss is punted for better than a 50-yard average in the ball game. He'll need all of that right now as he stands on the edge of his end zone. Mike Higgins respecting that range is standing back at his own 45-yard line. And another boomer. Higgins nestles it in at midfield. Good return. Great find for Georgia special teams, and Higgins could go all the way. Touchdown, saving tackle. And it once again, Dave, it was the All-American Randall Godfrey that threw a block at the 45-yard line that broke it open. Sam Butnick was telling us he was afraid that Liz might outkick the coverage. The coverage here, pretty good. There's the block by Godfrey that opened the hole. They had the wall set up on the right side, and a great play down there for Florida by number 33, Dwayne Mobley, to knock him out of bounds. Excellent return for Higgins. 44-yard kick, 41-yard return. They give it to Toomer on first and 10 for a couple or three. That's about it. Georgia right back where they started from. 103 on a rolling clock here in the first quarter. Dale Williams says, wait a minute. We've had two chances at this now. Let's see if we can jam it in the third time. Devere looking pretty good so far, though. He gave uh, the offensive coordinator duties to Tommy Perdue, who coaches at Robert E. Lee Institute in Thomaston, Georgia, and he was very impressed at the way the kids adjusted to the system. 